Hey folks, Matt Kuda here. Um, welcome to the first edition of Reviews from the Blind. I'm in my backyard bird studio and I'm actually in my car blind. And I'm going to be, each episode I'm going to be reviewing a Canon lens. Now, you know, Canon has a reputation of creating some very, very good glass. And I happen to be in a program where I can get my hands on a lot of these these lenses and, and good ones and do reviews on them. And I wanted to start out with a lens that is probably more on the inexpensive side of things. It's an L lens. It's the Canon EF 300mm F4 IS lens. I have it right here beside me. You can take a look at that. It's connected to my 7D Mark II. Um, and I'm going to shoot some birds out here, hopefully, if they'll cooperate over the next couple of days. This is kind of a, a, kind of a bad time to photograph birds. We're, we're actually in a spot where uh, the migration is going to be starting soon here. And the, the grackles have been causing a lot of problems. And so I've had to switch to safflower seeds. To keep the grackles population down but anyway just to kind of go over this lens real quick before we do some photography uh it is a a canon l lens it was it was made in this manufacturing was started i believe in 96 and it was released in 97 so it's a it's a fairly old lens and it's still being manufactured believe it or not you know some 20 years later and um it's an impressive lens. I mean, from a build quality perspective, it's certainly everything that you would expect from Canon. Um, has a nice little tripod foot here that's movable. As you can see here, it's movable. It has a built-in lens hood, which I really like. I love built-in lens hoods. I can take that down. It never comes off the camera. Um, really, really smooth focusing ring, ultra smooth focusing ring. Great for... Um, those difficult to focus situations where you want to get a sharp image and your and your camera won't autofocus and um, You know the only disadvantage is that it's a 300 millimeter and for most of the most of the photography that we're gonna do You know a 300 millimeter. It's it's a little on the short side for bird photography to be honest with you so I would I would kind of lean away from a 300 millimeter if possible, but if that's all you can afford, then this is probably going to be a good lens for you. Um, I definitely see this as a good mammal lens uh, for photographing mammals. It's very light. Uh, definitely, you could take it to your kids' uh, soccer games and so on. I've got a morning dove out here that's not happy that I'm that I'm talking as much as I am here. We got a grackle, a little baby grackle out here as well. They can't see me. I've got my camo netting up here. Um, it's a very typical blind setup for me. Uh, this is going to be a good opportunity for you guys. I hope you, I can really show you uh, the entire Canon line of telephoto lenses. And that's what this is all about. Anyway, let's get shooting. So I've got a, I've actually got a grackle out here right now that is a juvenile grackle and he is uh, actually eating the safflower seed which is odd. He's not supposed to do that. I'm going to scare him away. Scare him away with this white lens. That's one of the things that I, I don't like about uh, Canon L lenses is that they're white and white is something that that birds can see very easily that movement back and forth a uh, bird can see I mean Perfectly, so I would recommend if you do buy this lens go ahead and get a lens coat for it. Um, they're they're fairly inexpensive you can get name brand for around a hundred dollars lens coat um, you can get uh, third-party brands for you know 30 40 dollars um, but definitely recommend that. Focusing is, is relatively 
fast with this lens. Uh, the internet, quote, internet experts out there will tell you that this lens simply doesn't focus fast. Well, that's not true. I can tell you that right now. There, it's, it's a very good focusing lens. You can pick these up on the used market for about 600, between 600 and 900 dollars. Uh, the MSRP is about 1300 dollars on this lens. Um, I wouldn't buy it new unless you absolutely are dying to have a new lens. One of the beauties of this lens is that it's actually an f4 lens. And f4 lenses, um, as you know, uh, give us a little bit more light. They have a little more light gathering. In a situation like this where it's starting to get toward evening, it's a good idea to use f4. And because we're using a 300 millimeter lens, we're not going to, we're going to have more depth of field anyway. If I was using my 600, yeah, you really want to be, if you're going to use a 600 millimeter, you really need to be in that sweet spot of f8. So. It's just a waiting game at this point. So what I'll do is I'll come back and we'll review the photographs and have some final thoughts and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So the specifications, it's, uh, it's 2.6 pounds, uh, 1.2 kilograms if you're using the metric system. The lens is 8.7 inches long. Uh, not a particularly uh, long lens. It's, it's actually a, a fairly hand-holdable lens. Um, I, most of the time, you probably wouldn't even need a tripod, especially in, in wildlife photography. But it does have a tripod foot. It's image, image stabilized, so you're talking about two modes of image stabilization, which is very common in Canon uh, lenses. Mode 1, of course, that stabilizes uh, both the vertical and horizontal. You have uh, mode two that stabilizes the the vertical, and uh, mode two allows you for panning, so you can pan with birds in flight or a deer running or horses running, something along those lines. The lens construction is fifteen elements and eleven groups. Of course, it's a three hundred millimeter prime. Uh, the closest focusing distance is four point nine feet or 1.5 meters uh, it it is actually a, a close focusing lens it's not a one-to-one -one macro but it is a one-to-four macro if you want to call that a macro technically it's not really a macro unless it's a one-to-one -one. the filter size is 77 millimeters it has a built-in lens hood by the way that's an incredible feature I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute but that is a really nice feature um, removable tripod collar aperture is from f4 to f32 and the street price of this lens or actually the msrp is 1349 $1,349 us the used price uh, you can get these anywhere from 619 to 800 dollars okay so that's the that's the overall specifications okay i'm back in from two days of shooting on and off and um, I wanted to go through my images this time. I want to talk about image quality. I want to talk about um, my expectations and what actually uh, I ended up with. And then kind of my final thoughts on the lens. And then we'll just end this uh, review. So if we take a look at this first image here. This image is 100% crop from one of the grackles uh, from my backyard. So this is a real image. I took it. Um, what you'll notice is a couple of interesting things here. Right off the bat, you're going to notice that there is a certain level of chromatic aberration in this image. If you look around the the beak of the of the bird, you'll see there is a uh, a purple fringe, and that is caused by chromatic aberration. And this is something that's not not uncommon with lenses that were made. In the late 90s, even the better ones, um, it's not that big of a deal other than it looks really ugly initially. Um, I literally, just for testing purposes, I, did, I don't have the comparison, but I removed it in in uh, late room within probably something like 
10, 15 seconds. So not a big deal, not something you can't live live with. So take that as you as you will. I, I personally would not let's let let's put it this way. I would not let it keep me from buying this lens. Um if we look at this hundred percent crop, um the other thing is it's it's fairly sharp. Uh this is F four, so this is wide open. Uh it's fairly sharp. I I could live with this. It needs a little bit of sharpening. But I would expect that on an F4 lens uh, made in the late 90s. Um, there's a little bit of, of green fringing in here as well. It's kind of hard to see on this, on this view. But again, not a big deal. You can take that out just as easily in post-processing. Uh, my point here is that even at 100%, you can see this lens is, is perfectly fine. So let's move on to the next image. Okay, this next image is just of a, a you know, a typical house finch that you would see in your backyard. Um, I, I took this from my car blind. I took it with my with the the camera and lens rested on a uh, a bean bag. So very typical setup. This was shot at f5, so we've come up a little bit from f4. It's one one thousandth of a second. Of course, 300 millimeters, and the ISO is 400. So a little bit cleaner shot here for my 7D Mark II because I'm at 400 ISO. Uh, again, sharpness is 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 great here. Um, I would say it's good to very good on the sharpness. Uh, certainly on par with my 150 to 600 Sigma, which I I will use that continuously while I'm reviewing this because that's a good solid lens I can compare against. Uh, at 300, honestly though, I think my my Sigma has it beat in most cases. I've seen it kind of where I thought this lens was a little better. I've seen it where I thought the 150 to 600 was better. But at 300 to 400, that Sigma is, is killer. So uh, again, acceptable. Uh, the Bokeh here is is on par with, with the Sigma. Not seeing a lot of differences, so you know that's something to consider. I mean, you can buy the the 150 to 600 for what under a thousand now, so yeah, that's something to think about. Okay, the next image, again a house finch um, here again sharp. Uh, certainly, this one felt a, even a little sharper to me than than the others. Um, I, I did shoot at f5.6, so we're getting into this lens's sweet spot. The sweet spot for this lens to me felt like around 5.6 to f8, and that's typical of any lens. A lot of times, one to two stops, a uh, smaller aperture gives you better results, and this lens proves that as well. Uh, the one thing to, to think about, too, is that this shot here was taken on an overcast day, and typically overcast means you know, kind of duller looking images, not quite as sharp looking images. When you have sun on your bird, it looks, um, it gives it more of a, a feeling that it's sharper, I guess. So even, even taken like this, it's, it's very good. Again, sharpness, uh, good to very good. Um, F 5.6, one three twentieth of a second, ISO 800, and of course 300 millimeters. Okay, the next image. Um, this is the grackle that was here earlier when I got the 100% crop. A little different angle. Um, again, everything you would expect from a, from a quality L lens. It's sharp, good to very good on sharpness. This is, a, this is a cleaned up, totally processed image. I got rid of the noise in the image, um, increased the contrast, so on and so forth. So this is what it can do right here. This is a perfect example of what it can do. And I, again, very happy with the lens. Um, did what it was supposed to do. One thing I did want to talk about real quick is I did have some issues with the autofocus. Okay, It does autofocus well, but what the autofocus problem I had was not that it wouldn't focus, but that it slowed my frame rate down on my 7D Mark II, and I've never seen that with any other lens before. And I've shot with, shot that camera with a lot of lenses. And the only conclusion I could come to was, one, it was something with my particular copy of that lens, or 
it was simply a matter of that older design could not keep up with the 10 frames a second on that 7D. That's a possibility. Okay, I don't have that problem at all with my Sigma, so I suspect that it, it is a common problem with that lens. But um, if anyone else has experience with that, let me know. Okay, moving on to the next image. That's all I have, actually. So <laughs> that's pretty much the images that I took that were I thought were good that day. I took a bunch more, but I, I thought these were the best of that bunch. Um, just in conclusion, you know, would I buy this lens? I wouldn't have a problem buying this lens. Will I? No, uh, probably not. I'm not saying I won't for sure. Where I think this lens is most useful is for people that are wanting an f4 lens so they want to pick up that extra stop of light i think that's crucial uh, i think it's a good lens for somebody that wants a lighter lens in their kit that's uh, more of a walk around 300 millimeter i think it's great for that great for kids sports um not probably would not use this for a flight lens although it could in a pinch no doubt um I mean, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be doing a whole lot more of these videos. This is the first of many. I'm going to be reviewing in the coming future. I'm going to be coming near future, actually. I'm going to be reviewing the uh, 1DX Mark II. I'm going to be reviewing the 400 2.8L from Canon. And I'm going to be reviewing the 400D02. So uh, keep you know go ahead click subscribe and you know that's the best way to follow this this uh, vlog and um uh looking forward to the next one thanks for watching make it a great day and get out there and enjoy nature